You asked us to tell you exactly how we saved $30,000 in 20 months on an income of less than $40,000 a year. And we created this video series just for you. This is part two in the series. So be sure that you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the action. Hi, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. From Under the Median. This is part two in a three-part series telling you the exact steps that we took to save $30,000 in 20 months while raising four boys on an income which averaged under $40,000 a year. Be sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss anything in this series. It's not ever, this whole thing is not a straight trajectory. We never want to allow you guys to think that for us, this has just been, oh, easy piece of cake. Oh, we no. just <laughs> went from point A to point B and we were done. No, no, no. There were a lot of setbacks along the way and there were times when we certainly made mistakes and made errors and thought, boy, we shouldn't have done that. Yeah. It's not about making mistakes because you're human, you're gonna make mistakes, but it's about learning from the mistakes and saying, okay, I'm not gonna do that again. And then moving forward, not getting stuck. That's right. We stopped buying snacks. We, we don't buy uh, snack food to very much. Very right? seldom do we ever buy our children. Now, tortilla chips, um, you know, we'll buy while. those. But a lot of times when we buy tortilla chips, it's because I know that I'm going to make taco salad and you want your tortilla chips on top of your taco salad. I'm just saying. Yeah. For, um, so, for so yeah, seldom do we ever like walk around with handfuls of snack food. Like, but, but we do allow, we will go to like Sam's and buy a 50 pound bag of popcorn, which lasts a right. very Not pop, long time. Right, popcorn. Unpopped popcorn. Unpopped. Right. <laughs> unpopped. I'm pop, yeah, 50 pounds of pop, pop, pop That would be really yeah. bad. That would be like huge. I don't, I don't think we'd have room for that. <laughs> but uh, but so the, the boys will have a, a bowl of that every day, and I have some of that at yeah. work too. So that's very cheap eating. It's it's a, you know, a good source of fiber. Keep your snacks simple. Yes. That's right. <laughs> um, drink water. Mm-hmm. Don't drink soda or um, juice or milk. And we never allowed our kids to sip on those things throughout the day anyway. Mm -mm. But um, water is like really good for you. Your body needs water and water is cheap. So we stopped buying soda and, um, and juices and all those things too. We just simply never did it. Yeah. Uh, we would analyze our expenses and our receipts uh, about every week. Don't we do that about weekly? We still do that, by the way. These, we do. These aren't things that, yeah. we, that we used to do. We are still implementing these tips. Uh, but that way you can kind of see where's your money going, how much you're, you're laying out. Is there any way that we can you know, notch it up a bit if we're spending a little bit too much money on this or that? Uh, we analyze that and make a determination on how well we're doing. It always reminds me of like, sometimes we'll analyze receipts and we'll think, gosh, why did we buy that? Um, when we were years and years ago, this was before we had kids, we used to go to auctions and you would see people get this glazed look in their eyes. You remember this? <laughs> yeah, and they yeah. would be bidding ferociously against someone else for something that was worth like 10 bucks or something. And the, the bidding would be up to like 42, 50 or something. And we would look at each other and say, they are going to get home. I, I would always say, I, I wonder <laughs> if when they get home, they're going to, after all the rush and the excitement of the auction is over, they're going to think back on, why did I spend that much on that item? See, we would set a top dollar amount if we were interested in bidding on an item. We would just, while we were looking at things, we would say, well, if we're interested in that, we'll spend this much and no for no further. That's Nothing right. Nothing further. So, and, uh, so the whole idea is just sort of, sort of comparing that to a food budget. The same yeah. thing kind of happens. You walk into a store, A, never shop when you're hungry, and B, <laughs> always shop with a list. Um, and so you don't want to get home and look at that list and think, oh my goodness, why in the world did I buy X, Y, Z? You want to know exactly what you're going to buy before you walk in that store. And you have a plan to get into the store, get what you need, and get back out of the store. But we still, you know, it's inevitable. You find yourself buying something and thinking, I really didn't need that, which isn't the most horrible thing in the world because that reminds you, you next know, time you go to the store not to make the same mistake. Yeah, and, and we do it. We, we have to adjust every once in a while. We, we see where we're veering off a little, do a little course correction. It's not a big deal. We would repurpose 
old clothing and use that as rags. And I'll tell you something I use for washing my car. You can go to any store and buy a chamois, and they're expensive to dry your car off. I just use cotton towels, old towels. They work great. I might use two or three of them on, on a car to dry it off, but we don't spend any extra money on that stuff. Yeah, so we really try to use rags instead of paper towels. That's not to say we never buy paper towels. We do sometimes buy a roll of paper towels. They last us a really, really long time. Even when we had young children, paper towels lasted us a long time. But one of the things we did when we were saving to pay cash for this house was we cut the paper towel roll in half. We were looking at these paper towels and sometimes you just have an itty bitty spill and you're taking off one whole paper towel to deal with this little spill. And we were like, you know, I am willing to bet that if we cut the paper towels in half, we're not gonna miss the other half of the paper towel that we're not mm -hmm. using. How often are we actually gonna grab two of them to deal with a spill? And we found out that we were right. So mm -hmm. by cutting the paper towels in half, it actually made it go twice as far because ultimately, we only grabbed a half paper towel. Now, if you don't want to do that, there are some paper towel makers that, that make the paper towels so they actually, you actually get one half of it. Instead of a full sheet, it'll, it'll you know, it's perforated so you're actually getting one half at a time. So that will save you a little, little time and effort in doing that. The next tip probably does not surprise you. What do we do about going out to eat? Uh, we pretty much cut it out altogether. <laughs> we kind of didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we were given a gift certificate or, or something like that or had uh, uh, something special like that come in, then, then we would go out to eat on that. But we went out to eat maybe twice, three times a year. Not very often. Yeah, and we could easily count on one hand the number of times we went out to eat in a year. And that includes fast food restaurants. Yeah. So if you're going to go out to eat, we always tell people you need to look for for online coupons. That's the first thing you need to do is see if any coupons are available. You need to look at the online menu for that restaurant before you ever walk out the door because you wanna know exactly what is available on that menu in your price range before you go and see that T-bone steak that is, you know, $10 above your price range, but oh, it looks really good. <laughs> so you already have set your taste buds and set your expectations for, I'm gonna get the ground steak because I know already that the sirloin is, it's, it's $10 above what I'm able to spend. Then we would pick things ahead of time. So we knew when we walked in, the kids knew exactly what they were gonna get. We knew exactly what we were gonna get and we knew approximately what the total bill was going to be. Then we also picked restaurants that had kids eat free nights. Um, that was like gold for us. Remember, we had four young kids, so we were like, "Woo!" And um, and so we would try to combine coupons with the kids eat free. And then if somebody had given us a gift certificate, that was like the holy. Um, Grail trio <laughs> that if we hit all three of those points, we're like, ding, ding, ding. Yeah, this is definitely where we're going to go and spend our restaurant money. But we did not actually go to restaurants very much. Instead, what did we do? Well, we would go to one of our local grocery stores has really good takeout pizza. And, and I know it's not vegan, but we would go. Uh, this is before well, we weren't we, vegan. This time. is before we got really going on the vegan type of eating. Uh, we would go there and order a pizza. You could have it cooked there. Uh, I don't know if you have hy V in your area, but they'll do that. They'll pre-cook a pizza. And they're about half the cost of buying one at, say, Pizza Hut. Uh, so we would come home with a piping hot uh, family-sized pizza for the family, watch a movie, and, and, and there you are. That gave Hope a night off. It's just as good as eating out on your eating in. So It was Friday night movie night, so the kids got to yeah. pick the movie. We had pizza, which was an incredible treat for them, and we had sometimes, not all the time, sometimes we had a little ice cream. <laughs> yeah. And that was like, <laughs> that was amazing for them because we didn't buy ice cream very much either. Now, the other thing that we did in nice weather is we did what we called Friday night picnics. Mm -hmm. So I would pack up literally whatever I had cooked for supper, we packed it up. Sometimes we had to transport in a crock pot or wrap it in foil or whatever we needed to do to keep it warm between our house and the park. And we would take it to a park which overlooked the river and we would take along maybe a board game or a family read aloud or a frisbee. and Or even would... a portable phonograph that I have. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's an old wind up. From the, and, from the 40s. And so we would literally just spend two or three hours at the park that evening 
evening, eat and have some time together as a family. And the boys absolutely loved it. Look, this is not about deprivation. Extreme frugality. Yes, you are going to cut some things out of your budget. Yes, you're going to cut down some things, cut some things out, but you don't have to cut everything out. The one thing you don't have to cut out in extreme frugality is time together with your family. Mm -hmm. If anything, that sort of made us come together as a family more often than other people did because we found ways in order to spend that time without spending any money. And the kids absolutely loved having that regular time together as a family. Uh, here's another very important note that Hope and I implemented when we were first married. We decided, and this was a suggestion actually from a friend, oh, yeah. that we do not spend any amount of money. We, we finally brought it to the $10 level, but, but we did not spend any money independently of each other. I would check in with Hope before spending money on an item that I wanted. Hope would check in with me. We would confer, and if we were in agreement, then we would do it. So we didn't spend money apart from each other when we were not in agreement about it. We've brought that to about a $10 level now, where maybe... And, and we, I think it was $10 back then, too. Now, why is this? Is it because one of us is a control freak? Mm -mm. Well, maybe I am a little bit, but, but, okay, setting that aside, my control freakiness, um, it's not, it's because, it's not that we didn't trust one another, we deeply respect one another, oh, yeah. but it was because we had very specific goals, and we agreed, this is the goal, this is what we want to do, this is what we need to do, and in order to facilitate that happening, we're going to put more or less checks and balances in place so mm -hmm. that if I'm out somewhere and I see something, I'm like, ooh, $20, that's a really good deal. But I'm going to check with Larry first, not to get his permission, but to say, is this in the budget? That was it more than anything else. Is this something that is in our budget? And if it's in our budget, can we come into agreement that this is something that is appropriate for us to spend our money on? When yeah. you do that, it actually makes you come closer together as a couple rather than further apart. Yeah, and, and that way we weren't spending money that we shouldn't be spending. Uh, so uh, I, I found that to be a very helpful tip from our, from our good friends. We're going to wrap up all of our tips on extreme frugality next week on the program. We'll drop that new video next Monday, so make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. If you did miss part one and you haven't watched it yet, it's right there at the right of the screen. Go ahead and click on that video now.